more aerodynamic and lighter in weight. That is what we all want as cyclists, isn't it? Uh, loads of that sort of stuff on display here at Eurobike. So let's go and rove and take a look. are a company that you might have seen on GCN before if you watched Sai's video from Bristol Bespoke uh, earlier on this year. A few updates to their models. This is the Arachnid, uh, their titanium frame set. Complete with disc brakes, they've got that down to just 6.8 kilograms at the moment. And here we've got their new Levriero time trial bike. Uh, probably the only bike in the world that is time trial specific, disc brake equipped and made of steel. Just check out the welding around these parts of the bike here. Very neat indeed. Uh, now, along with the TRP disc brakes, they've also got their own disc brake covers. And I wouldn't be surprised to see these in a the Pro Peloton in a not too distant future. They are patent pending. Uh, they are through axles, and you can just remove the wheels without anything happening to the rotor covers themselves. Some of you will have seen this on the GCN show as Tech of the Week about two months ago. Uh, but if you haven't, this is the 3T Strada, designed by Gerard Vrooman, co-founder of Cervelo. This is his latest aerodynamic design, uh, built around disc brakes with internal cabling, as you can see. Uh, but what also makes this stand out from the crowd is the fact that it is built specifically for one by, i.e. only one chainring here on the front. So there's no mount at all here on the seat tube for a front mech. Now, at the time, we reported that they are making their own uh, cassette and we said it could be 12 speed we were wrong apparently it's only going to be 11 speed so what makes the cassette different to what's out there at the moment is that there's going to be a very close ratio for the smaller cogs down here at the bottom uh, starting from a 9 tooth going up to 10 11 12 13 before some bigger jumps when you get to the climbing cogs uh, trying to make one by systems work better on road bikes Along with the first look of the new Ultegra group set, which you will have seen already from Sai, uh, Shimano have also released this, which is the clincher version of their tri-spoke wheel. Uh, the tubular version you can see just behind me, that's been out for quite some time, has been ridden very successfully by pro teams, most notably probably Rowan Dennis, who actually hasn't lost a time trial that he started this year. Uh, this though, of course, way better for those of us who don't have the luxury of a team car following us when we're racing or training, because you can change the inner tube yourself. Uh, it's got Ultegra internals. Total weight is 1,040 grams. It's got quite a wide rim for aerodynamics, around 26 millimetres across. Do you like a tri-smoke? If you really want lightweight, then you need to go no further than the THM booth. Uh, this is their tibia stem. Let's pick that off there. It really weighs virtually nothing. Uh, if you want the exact stats though, this is 78 grams. Honestly, you just can't believe it when you feel it in your hand. Uh, with a price tag there of 499 euros, that does work out at about six euros per gram. So lightweight doesn't necessarily come cheap, as you all very well know. Uh, these are the updated fibula cantilever, not cantilever brakes, but the normal caliper brakes, four rim brakes. Uh, without pads, these weigh 120 grams each, and they've been updated to accommodate the fashion for wider rims and tires. Look at the action on that. Front of display at Stork Stand is this Enario Pro Disc, which they have managed to get down to 6.9 kilograms in the build that you see here with the DT Swiss wheels, uh, disc brakes, and a full SRAM red group set, etc. But the showstopper is actually kind of slightly hidden away here towards the back. Uh, this is the Enario 2 signature model, uh, and as you see this here, it weighs. Uh, 5.3 kilograms, uh, really is nothing to this at all. And that's even with some deep dish wheels, again supplied uh, by DT Swiss. Oh, those THM brakes back on here as well. Lightweight have just unveiled the updated version of their Ergostout rim brake bike, which you can see uh, just in front of me here now. Uh, one of the main differences is in terms of the tyre clearance at both the front and the rear. This one can now accommodate 28mm tyres, whereas the previous version uh, had a maximum of 25mm tyres. The frame in the size 54 comes in at 790 grams, with 340 grams uh, the weight of the fork. So not the lightest in the world, but lightweight say uh, that was a deliberate move. They want it to be far more more durable and long term and have no degradation in terms of the performance of the frame over time. I think they've also got some new wheels over here. 
and they've also updated their Meilenstein C disc brake wheels. Uh, so this is the old one released last year. This is the one uh, just released a couple of days ago here at Eurobike. Main difference being that the rim is much wider. So here, 20 millimeters wide. Here is 24 millimeters. So quite a significant difference, really. Uh, accommodating the trend, of course, for much wider tyres, and therefore more comfort on bikes. Uh, they have kept the same high modular fibre in the spokes, apparently a material normally only used in the aerospace industry, uh, which has allowed them to keep these carbon fibre spokes, even with the forces associated with disc brakes. The Scott Foyle was the first ever aero bike to take the win at Paru Bay, courtesy of that fantastic ride uh, from Matt Heyman in 2016. And it is now available in a disc brake version, which they've released here at Eurobike. Uh, they've had to beef up the non-drive side seat stay slightly and the forks as well, but it's only added a total of 40 grams over the rim brake version. And I do particularly like the design of the front fork. Uh, if you look at it from the front, you can see that much of that flat mount caliper uh, is hidden from the wind. And apparently they've been able to do that courtesy of a relaxing of the rules by the UCI concerning the three to one ratio. You may remember on Tech of the Week on the GCN show a couple of weeks back, we talked about the collaboration between Bianchi and Ferrari. And here they are in the flesh, or in the carbon to be a little bit more specific. Now this is the SF01, it's a frame which comes in at 780 grams. There will be two options, either the DI2 that you see here, or the Campagnolo Super Record EPS which is on the other bike. Now there's a few specific details which I want to talk about. The first is that we speculated about the integration between Bianchi Celeste Green and the Ferrari Red. Uh, there isn't that much integration to be honest apart from a couple of subtle touches up there on the top tube and also on the stem cap. The saddle up here is the Astute One made out of 3K carbon which is something normally reserved for parts of a Ferrari I understand. Uh, that thing comes in at just 94 grams. Uh, goodness knows how comfortable or not it is but that is certainly very light indeed. Uh, and Astute also provide the vibration damping luxury black bar tape. French manufacturer Look have made a few adjustments to their aero bike, the Aero Light RS. Uh, up here is the ADH2 bar. Uh, you can see that this has been designed so that you can easily fit aero bars into the centre here, as and when you wish to go in a more aero position for a time trial perhaps. Uh, you can also adjust your brakes on the fly using these two bits just here. Also changed on this bike is the fact that the cables no longer enter straight into the frame here but rather through this more spacious area just underneath the stem. Uh, that allows them better handling because it's much freer, uh, less friction when you're turning the bars etc. And they have also made things easier for the mechanics out there uh, by actually externalising underneath the bottom bracket some of the cables. Uh, in the previous incarnation of this bike you had to take the crankster out to do any adjusting or replacement uh, of the cables. That is no longer the case and they've also finally changed the size of the uh, chain Day here to accommodate campy EPS because apparently uh, what needed to go in is slightly bigger on the EPS than it is for DI2. Another aero bike which is now available in a disc brake model is this one from Ridley which is their NOAA SL disc. Uh, as you can see not many cables on display here they're almost completely hidden from view courtesy of their new one piece aero handlebar here at the front. Uh, cables run through that through the stem and directly down into the frame itself. I do like the look of that, I think it's particularly nice with the subtle graphics that they've got on the bike. Good job Ridley. Well I'm afraid that is the last of our aero and lightweight tech for this particular video. Uh, give it a thumbs up down below if you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel so far you can do so right now by clicking on the globe. If you missed part one of our general tech here at Eurobike 2017 you can find that uh, just down here or the latest edition of the GCN show is in the other corner just down here.